Hey everybody, Mike here with Delta Faucet. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to install Delta Faucet's round shower base. Now, if you're considering installing a complete corner shower set, check out our how to prepare video to walk you through the product compatibility and how to prepare your space. This installation is pretty easy, but if at any point along the way, you feel a step is a little bit beyond your abilities, then I definitely recommend contacting a professional for some additional help. Now, you should also know that there are some steps along the way where you're gonna to need to allow curing time for adhesive and sealant. Using these properly is extremely important, so please don't rush through these sections. Allowing ample time for curing based on the manufacturer's recommendation is very, very important. Now, Delta Faucet also shows a list of recommended adhesive and sealants in the installation guide that comes with your product. All right, now a few things to consider before beginning the installation. First, you wanna be sure that the model of your shower base will fit in the intended location. Make sure you check the size of your opening. Now, some other things to consider, how will the door to your enclosure open? Make sure it works with the layout of your bathroom. And take time to think through where your plumbing fixtures are located relative to your shower components. For example, if I plan to add the round shower door enclosure to this base, the door to that enclosure slides open left to right. Ideally, I want my shower head to be on the left side of the corner shower. You need to be able to easily reach the trim to turn on your water to warm it up, but you don't want the water to spray out when you do that. Also, you wanna be sure that your walls and your subfloor are level, plumb, and square. If it's a bit uneven, you can apply a mortar bed to help with that, but hopefully that's something we can avoid. Okay, I think that covers it. So if you're ready, then let's get to it. Now for this install, you're gonna need the following tools. Gloves, a quarter inch square notch trowel, a drill with a bit extender, a 3 16 inch drill bit, and a driver bit. Safety glasses, caulk gun, a level, a carpenter square, shims, a drop cloth, sealant, adhesive, a tape measure, a pencil, and maybe some self-leveler or mortar. Here we are at the location I'll be installing my shower base. Now there's three things I wanna check before I get started. First, I wanna make sure my subfloor is perfectly level. Second, I wanna make sure that all my vertical framing is perfectly plumb. And third, I also wanna to check to make sure that my two walls are perfectly square with each other. So the first thing I'm gonna do is use my long level here, place it along the subfloor, along both the side and the back, and then also along the front edge where my shower pan will sit, just making sure all those dimensions look nice and level. After I've done that, I'm gonna to move to my vertical framing here, using my level straight up and down, and then placing it along each of the vertical framing members all the way around, checking to make sure they're nice and plumb. All right. Once I've got that done, I'm gonna do one last check, and that's square. And to do square, I'm gonna use my carpenter square. I'm gonna place it flat in the corner, making sure that I'm getting good and even contact along each edge there. All right, now another thing you'll notice is I've added some additional framing to my opening here according to what's shown in the instructions for my shower base. However, I think it's a great idea just to kind of think through how else I'm gonna be finishing the walls and also the shower door, and if that requires any additional framing as well. In my opinion, it's easiest to add that now when we have the opening totally free and clear. Okay, so once you've made any of those final adjustments necessary and also added your additional framing, we can move on to dry fitting our shower base. The first step in dry fitting our shower base is to visually check it for any signs of damage. So I'm just gonna do a quick visual inspection of the front and the back, making sure everything looks good. Now your model may or may not have apron retainers in it. I just wanna make sure those are in place as well. Once that's done, I also wanna check my opening to make sure that I don't have any debris on the ground and that I can slide my base into place. All right, now there's two things I wanna point out when we dry fit this pan. The first is I've got it pushed all the way back in the corner, making sure I'm getting good contact along each edge with my wall. And then secondly, I'm not putting any downward pressure on it. I want this just to sit naturally in the space. Then I wanna to check to make sure it's sitting level. So I'm gonna use my level again, place it along the deck of the pan, not along the top of the flange, but that flat deck. I'm gonna check both sides. And then also I wanna make sure I check along the front edge here. All right, now my pan looks nice and level, so there's nothing I'm gonna have to adjust. However, if yours was a little off level, don't worry. Just know that we're gonna have to use a self-leveler or a mortar bed in the later step to make sure this is sitting perfectly level on your subfloor. All right, once you've got the position correct, we're gonna use our pencil, we're gonna mark three locations. I'm first gonna start by marking in the center of my flange of each one of my vertical framing members here. I'm gonna work all the way around. Second, I'm gonna use my pencil and go ahead and mark that drain hole since I don't have my rough plumbing installed already. 
And then again, lastly, I want to make sure that I mark the edge of the pan along the subfloor all the way around. All right, now that I have those three things marked and my pan's looking great, I'm gonna go ahead and pull it back out and we can move on to the next step. All right, now that I have my shower base pulled out away from my wall a little bit, we can move on to drilling our pilot holes. Now to do this, I'm gonna be using a 3 16 inch drill bit, and I've also got a drill bit extender on here because I wanna make sure that the spinning chuck of the drill isn't gonna contact anywhere on the shower base, which could cause some damage. So once I've got the drill all ready to go, I'm gonna move around, drilling each one of my pilot holes through my flange all the way around my shower base here. And again, that's why I pulled it out away from the wall because I wanna make sure that I'm drilling these pilot holes just through the flange and not into the wood framing back behind it at all. So once you get everything ready to go, take your drill and let's go ahead and drill those pilot holes. All right, now that I've got those pilot holes drilled, I'm gonna move on to installing my shower drain. And I wanna do this according to the shower drain manufacturer's instructions. One thing I do wanna point out is I wanna make sure that we're not using plumber's putty as a sealant here because the plumber's putty could degrade the shower base material. Also, if you haven't already, go ahead and bring your rough plumbing up to speed, making sure it's not only centered in that location we marked previously, but also the correct dimension off of the subfloor to ensure a nice watertight connection between drain and plumbing. Once you've done those two things, come back here and we'll move on to the next step. All right, now that I have my shower drain installed and my rough plumbing brought up to speed, I think it's a great idea just to dry fit this one last time to make sure everything's in the correct position and at the correct heights. So I'm gonna take my shower base, push it tight back into my corner, and then slip it down over my rough plumbing. And here what I'm looking for is making sure I'm getting a good connection between my drain and my rough plumbing according to the drain manufacturer's instructions. Now once everything looks good, I can go ahead and pull this base back out of my space, and then we can move on to adhering the base to the subfloor. Now there's a couple different ways you can adhere your shower base to your subfloor. In my instance here, my shower base is sitting perfectly level in my opening. So I'm gonna use adhesive, spreading it evenly with a quarter inch notch trowel over my subfloor here, making sure I stay inside this outside reference line that I drew earlier. However, if yours at home was sitting a little bit out of level, this is the step we'd wanna use that self-leveler or a mortar bed, setting your shower base down on top of that, which will help ensure it's sitting perfectly level in our opening. So whichever way you have to do it, go ahead and we're gonna get that adhesive down on your subfloor and then come back here and we'll set our shower base into place. All right, now that I have my adhesive or my self-leveler or my mortar bed all spread out in my opening here, I'm gonna take my shower pan and drop it directly down over that rough plumbing before everything sets up. But before I do that, there's two things I wanna point out. First is I want to make sure I'm removing any protective plastic off of my shower base. I'm going to go ahead and peel this off. Secondly, I want to reference my drain manufacturer's instructions one last time to make sure there's nothing extra I have to be adding to the rough plumbing or to the drain itself to ensure a nice permanent watertight connection before I drop the shower base into place. Once I've done both those things, I'm going to take my shower base, line it up perfectly up over the top and drop it straight down. I want to make sure I'm not sliding this in or damaging any of my rough plumbing or my framing as I do this. All right, I've set my shower base in place, and one thing I haven't done is put any sort of downward pressure on this. What I wanna do is just let it sit naturally into its opening. Next, I'm gonna use my level, just like I did when I dry fit it, and check to make sure my shower base is sitting level. So again, placing this along each deck, along the back and the sides, and then also along the front. And what this is gonna do is, while everything's still wet under there, it's gonna give me the ability to make sure this is sitting perfectly level before everything sets up. So if I have a little bit of a high spot, I can put just a little bit of pressure on that edge and it should help level that base totally perfect. Okay, so since I use adhesive, I can go ahead and move on to the next step of securing our shower base to our vertical framing with screws. Now I wanna talk about the screws just for a second here. I'm gonna be using screws that are an inch and a half long and most importantly, are pan head. And the reason that's important they're pan head is because when we screw these through those pilot holes we drilled earlier, we wanna make sure we're not putting any undue stress on the flange that could cause it to crack. So, I've got the correct screws and I've got my drill ready to go with the correct drill bit. And again, I'm using that drill bit extender to make sure that the spinning drill chuck isn't gonna damage my base as I moved around the perimeter here. And I also wanna point out that when I'm doing this, I'm gonna do my best to not put any weight at all inside the pan while everything's still setting up. So again, I don't wanna be kneeling or standing in this as I put those screws in all the way around. And then finally, I wanna do one last visual inspection 
of the distance between my flange and my vertical wood framing here, making sure that I'm getting a nice tight connection between the flange itself and the wood framing with no gap. Now it's okay if you do have a gap, all you're gonna wanna do is use a wood shim here that you're gonna drop down between the flange and the wood framing, making sure that we have a good tight connection because again, we don't wanna crack anything as we're securing everything up to our framing. Once everything's ready to go, go ahead and grab your drill and your screws, work your way around the perimeter, screwing it into place. All right, I've got my shower base secured into place and the shower drain's all done. So that about wraps things up for the installation of the shower base. There is one last thing I wanna point out though, is that when you finish your bathroom remodel and you get your walls and your finished floor done, I wanna make sure we add a bead of sealant between the shower base and the finished floor to ensure a nice watertight seal between the two. If you have any additional questions, you can always reach out to Delta Faucet's customer service team. They're more than happy to help.